Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got something very, very interesting to talk about. It is the 2023 Generation Iron Annual Bodybuilding Awards and the very, very controversial results for the best arms category, which was won by none other but Chris Bumstead. Surprisingly, very, very surprisingly, because in the bodybuilding world, Sibam's arms are known as weak arms as his weakest body part and just overall not definitely not the best arms even in classic physique not even to mention open division however i have to point out that last year when he won the mr olympia his arms did look surprisingly better than all the years before especially if you compare them to what they looked like a couple of years ago let's say when he won his first mr olympia until now a change is tremendous so if there was a category for the most improved arms i would see no issue with chris winning that category but for the best arms in the world right now hell no hell no now the way this was judged was by fans there is no team of experts of judges deciding who wins each category it's open for anybody to vote anybody who has the access to the internet so the fans decided that Chris Bumstead wins in this lineup right here. Why did it go this way? Is it because fans think Chris's arms are better than those of Nick Walker or Michael Crisio or any of the guys from this list? No, no, I think it's because at this point Chris Bumstead is basically mainstream. A lot of his followers don't even follow bodybuilding, they just follow him and other fitness influencers, other YouTubers, TikTokers and whatever. So when those people saw this list, they only saw one familiar name and they thought they should support the guy they follow, so they clicked Chris Bumstead. Also, there are probably a lot of people who follow bodybuilding, they know about Nick Walker and Michael Crisio, but they're just big fans of Chris, so they wanted to help him out by voting for him. And so the Generation Iron Annual Best Arms Award went to Chris Bumstead, the most popular bodybuilder, but a bodybuilder with some of the worst arms right now. I'm sure all of you following this channel already know that Chris is known for his bad arm genetics, but if you don't know that, well, take a look. His biceps are very, very short. The insertions and the shape of the biceps and triceps both are just not looking very aesthetically pleasing. Sometimes in certain poses and certain angles, it looks like he tore both of his biceps. And yeah, I agree with that. They kind of look like Dorian Yates' bicep, for example, after he tore it. But no, this is just the way Chris Bumstead's arms are shaped. Triceps also very weirdly shaped, definitely not full and round as for example those of Kevin Levroni, that's a very good example of good triceps, Phil Heat for example, but in this list from today's active bodybuilders, Nick Walker and Mikael Crisio take second and third spot. So let's take a look at these guys' arms and uh, let's compare them to Chris Bumstead's arms. So let's talk about triceps since I already started talking about the triceps. Take a look at Michal Krizio's triceps, like, this is roundness, this is a proper looking tricep with the fullness, with the roundness, it just looks good, it just looks really freaking impressive, and as far as Nick Walker in the second spot, here is what good biceps, well-shaped biceps actually look like, and how big arms can actually get, how big some of the guys' arms are right now in the world, just look at how peaky Nick Walker's biceps actually are and how low they are inserted, how full they are as well. So, between Nick Walker and Michal Krizio, who takes this one? Well, I guess it depends, because this category is not simply best arms, but let's check out the description of this category. So, Generation Iron says the biggest, most bulging biceps, all right, a weird choice of words. I would rather use a word peak instead of bulge, but okay. Then they say the toughest forearms. What the hell does the toughest forearms even mean? Who the hell knows? And then they say the tightest triceps. <laughs> the tightest triceps. Who the hell uses the word tight to describe a body part? Okay, one comes to mind, but definitely not in the context of bodybuilding. Anyways, as far as bodybuilding terms and best arms right now, 
it would have to be between Nick Walker and Michal Krizio. So who would I choose amongst these two guys? It's definitely a close battle. If you take a look at Krizio's arms, they are very well shaped. They really have a pretty shape to them, especially when he lowers them down. When he lifts them up in the front double bicep, the biceps are not really that peaky and that massive. I think Rizzo has better triceps than Nick Walker, but Nick Walker also has big triceps, like his arms are really freaking big, especially for his height. You know, he's a lot shorter than Rizzo, he looks like he could walk on those freaking arms. I believe they are 24 inches, I don't know about Krizio exactly, but Nick Walker has 24 inch arms, which is insane for a guy who is 5 foot 7. And honestly, it doesn't look like he did anything to them in terms of the sight enhancement oil. They do not look enhanced, not in that sense, at least, they have the hardness, they have the details, and the most impressive part about Nick Walker's arms are definitely his biceps, especially the bicep peaks, like those arms are definitely some of the best arms in the history of bodybuilding. So I believe the Generation Iron results for the second and third are correct, Nick Walker 22% and Michal Krizio 18%, I see it that way, I think Nick Walker's arms are a little bit better because of those peaking biceps and just overall size in comparison to the rest of the body, so they are freakier if you ask me. Maybe Krizio's are more aesthetic because he has those really long biceps and really really long triceps. They remind me of Kevin Leveroni a little, but Nick Walker's arms also don't have short muscle bellies and they have a much bigger bicep peak. And they are some of the best arms in the history of the world. And so are Krizio's arms. As far as the bodybuilders who are retired with the best arms, there are definitely a couple of guys who could rival Nick Walker, but I still think Nick Walker's arms are probably the best in history. As far as the retired bodybuilders, you have Lee Priest with really crazy looking arms, you have Phil Heath who was also really good in that department, and then also Rolly Winkler. If you guys forgot about Rolly, he had insanely big arms. But as of today, yeah, it's definitely Nick Walker and Michael Grigio, and Chris Bumstead should not even be on any list for the best arms. I don't even know why he was included, I guess it was because he's popular, he would draw attention, but, you know, his arms are definitely not in the category of the best in the world. Actually, if there was a list of the worst arms in competitive bodybuilding today, then sure, Chris could be in that list, but not in this one. Now in this list you can see some other names like Samson Dauda, like Derek Lansford and all of these guys have better arms than Chris Bumstead, probably every single open Olympian, I'm pretty sure about that, but if you talk about the best arms in the world, I don't even think guys like Derek Lansford, Samson Dauda or even Harry Chupan, even though those guys are top 3 in the world, they really shouldn't be considered uh, as the potential best arms in the world, yes, popular, yes, successful, best arms, no, Samson Dauda's arms should definitely be bigger and fuller, especially in the front double bicep, Derek Lansford, same thing, front double bicep especially, biceps should be bigger, Hari Chopin, even though there's probably a lot of oil in those arms, they're still not the biggest nor the best, Andrew Jack is also on this list, and his weakest body part are his arms and his forearms, so he definitely should not be included here, even though he's very popular. Generation Iron is a very, very popular brand, very popular website. The first movies that they made were really good, but after that, basically bodybuilding industry doesn't like Generation Iron. Nobody likes them, nobody likes what they're doing. They're always kind of pushing some negative content, and I don't think they're contributing to the popularity of bodybuilding, really. But they are pretty popular, they are working a lot, there are a lot of movies they're making, so when they do something like this, like these awards, people talk about it, you know, it's spoken about. This is 8 annual bodybuilding awards by Generation Iron, so yeah, it's sort of a tradition right now, and you know, the fans are voting, so it's a pretty big deal, but yeah, these results are just hilarious, and they don't make sense. 
Anyways, I saw this, I thought it would be interesting to make a video about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want me to make more content for you guys, just subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye bye.